Hello and welcome. I'm Arumba. Thank you for watching. This is going to be a mini tutorial on how to use Quick Fort, which is an addition to go along with Dwarf Fortress. Makes building your fortress very easy and very consistent. And I'm doing a let's play right now. I wanted to record this video separately though so that you could learn how to use Quick Fort on your own or watch this in series with the rest of my let's play. So before we fire up Quick Fort, I want to go through the um, the settings that have that you can modify. So I'm going to open up the Utilities directory in this Masterwork Dwarf Fortress and pull up Quick Fort and go to the Configuration folder, select Options. Now this is where you can modify some of the settings for Quick Fort. One of the very first things that I like to do is um, remove the um, the tooltip display. I don't like how it constantly puts the tooltip in front of my gameplay. After you've learned the tooltips, learned the shortcut keys, you won't need it anymore. And this is how you change that. So right here, set to zero to disable the mouse tooltip entirely. Um, I would recommend after you've used it for a while to change it to zero. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it on just so you can see um, if this is your first bit of exposure to Quick Fort. And so I just wanted to show you how to get in here to modify that setting. All right, now let's fire up Quick Fort. And all that it's going to do is run in the background. That's all that it really does. There isn't a big, huge interface or anything else that's really going to show up because this is a essentially a macro software. It, it just helps you to do some macro of the uh, placement of buildings and things. Now, this warning will pop up if you've never run QuickFort before. QuickFort has detected that this instance of Dwarf Fortress has a setting of macro MS5 in its data, uh, data in it, in it.txt file. Values of macro MS higher than zero can make it run slowly. And it's asking if it can change it to zero. We're going to say yes. And now it wants us to restart Dwarf Fortress. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then open up Dwarf Fortress again. And this is that tooltip I was just talking about says Quick Fort 2.04, pick a blueprint file with Alt F. Now if you don't want that tooltip to be on your game screen all the time while you're playing Dwarf Fortress, it is easy to remove. You press Alt H to hide the tooltip. Alt H again brings it back. If you just wanted to disable it completely, go into the configuration settings that we did at the beginning of the video. Now let's fire up a, uh, an example fortress so I can demonstrate how Quick Fort works. And while we're at it, why don't we just load up some sound sense? We have a little bit of background noise. Now, normally when you're playing Dwarf Fortress, you need to press D and designate and say, okay, I want to build, say, from here to here. Let's dig out a tunnel and let's build out this. And I also want to do that. And then I'm going to build that into a uh, you know, storage area. And it, it can take a long time to, to build out an entire fortress. Quick Fort basically allows you to put pre-made blueprint files together in Microsoft Excel or any other text editor and then plant them into the game. So to select a file, all we do is press Alt-F and then it's going to have us go and find a file that it can use. Now, the Masterwork Door Fortress download comes with some default plugins, some default blueprints. I'm going to use some of the custom ones that I've made though so that I can demonstrate how to use them. So for instance, one of my favorites is the windmill bedrooms. So I've selected windmill bedrooms as my template and in a moment we'll go through Excel to, to show you how you actually build this blueprint. So I'm going to use windmill dig and I'll select OK. I've actually got it loaded up now and in order to use the blueprint I need to just basically read the tooltip. Type D for designations. Position the keyboard with uh, position the cursor with keyboard. And then it says Alt V shows your footprint. So if I press Alt V, it's going to show me how much of the screen it's going to take. You can see the cursor moving around, showing me an example. That's how big the area of this blueprint is. So say for example, I'm trying to build up here, and I do it. I can see that it's going to go out into the outside of the world. So I can move it around until I find a, a position that's going to just barely fit within the walls. Like say right here. Now that I'm ready to, to actually use 
the blueprint, instead of pressing Alt-V, I'm going to press Alt-D. And, ta-da, I've got the Windmill Villas blueprint completed, just like that. Now, you can do a lot more than just that. In fact, if I press Alt-R, I can use some transformations. The most basic transformations would be something like, say, 5D, which means take the blueprint and repeat it five times going downward from the current position. I click OK. I press Alt-D again. It does it once on this level, once on the level below, again, again, and again. So that just did five floors of designations. If you compare that to, say, doing this, di this dig out on your own, I actually got very good at it before I uh, got quick for it, but you have to basically, all right, so there's the central stair, there's the rows around it, You can see, I mean, it, try as fast as I can. I keep making mistakes. And even just remembering exactly how you want it to look can be very difficult. I've, I've barely even done just the, the two main, the main spokes to this thing where I've done five with QuickFort. But that's not all that QuickFort can do. If we press Alt-F, and open up the file again, or if we want to change the selection for the current file, I can just press Alt-E, which brings up that folder, that file again. So let's say I've used QuickFort to designate the digging area. Now I want to build the digging area. I can use this to put a door, a bed, a cabinet, and a coffer. I select OK, and now the tooltip changes. In order to use the build interface, I have to press B, O, and then position with cursor. So for instance, let's go up here again. I can do that, and then I can use Alt-V to check the footprint. Of course, it's going to be the same. And if I had the right equipment to do this, I could press Alt-D. And unfortunately, it is going to break in this example because I don't have any doors, so it'll say needs door. I can play, I can actually exit out. Or I could instead, see actually I'm on the wrong interface there, so it's doing it wrong. So B-O, B-O, place with cursor, Alt-D, and then I can enter this thing called planning mode, which would allow me to plant, plant down beds, desks, chairs, those things, even before I have them. But I would need to wait for it to be dug out before I could do that. Now, the, there's another setting that you can use. You can do, um, you can actually modify stockpiles using this. That's the query interface. And other than that, uh, I think for this for this video, I'm going to end it here, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually put the templates into Microsoft Excel and set them up so that they'll work properly. But this is just an example to show you how useful QuickFort can really be. So thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode.